Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Eve Echoes. Tonight on the show, we're here today with a notorious Scalawag who goes by the name of Sky Ray. Welcome, Sky Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. Nice to meet you, GK. Uh, you've probably heard of his exploits in New Eden from some of the articles he's written because he is also an official content creator. Not the video kind, but the more refined taste man, like book reading kind. The infamous blog, A Pirate's Guide, providing interesting concepts, fun stories, PvP facts, tips and tricks. It's all there. Be sure to check it out. The blog is in the link description. Uh, so, are you ready with our interview today? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so let's start and uh, allow the audience to indulge our, our presence. Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am a former EVE Online player who, when uh, EVE Echoes came out, decided I would check it out and see what it was like and really kind of fell in love with it. Uh, in my day job, I am a high school teacher. I teach uh, computer science, speech and debate, and a few other odds and ends. Uh, I'm a dad, and so as a result, I don't necessarily have as much free time as when I used to uh, play MMOs growing up. Uh, but I've always been attracted by uh, by MMOs. I always enjoy those games, but I was always kind of the atypical player who tended to play a massively multiplayer game primarily as a solo player. Uh, so I was I was the person who would you know level without ever teaming once all the way from one to seventy in World of Warcraft or things like that. And when I played Eve Online, it was much the same. I really kind of enjoyed experiencing this kind of open world through the lens of someone who who primarily does things you know kind of on their own, and which is probably what led me to piracy and these other things. <laughs> well, that's uh, kind of interesting because um, it kind of covers our second question that we had prepared. Um, and we know you played EVE Online, but uh, I'm trying to... The opinions are pretty much scattered on how EVE Echo stands in regards to EVE Online. I'm sure you found out um, about stories that people tend to get casual in EVE Echoes, which is something that's pretty much uh, considered like a taboo in, uh, uh, in EVE Online. Uh, in your eyes, in your opinion, how different is Echoes from EVE Online? Uh, so a couple or a little while ago, I uh, when the you know World of Warcraft classic servers came out, I tested those out for a little while. I, I played World of Warcraft when I was in college, uh, and I really kind of enjoyed that nostalgia hit. Of, this is what the game was like back when it first came out, and a lot of the mechanics were simpler. Uh, and I, I feel like Echoes feels very much like that, but for EVE Online. So when, when I first joined EVE Online, the game had been out for five years, so already I was way behind in experience and in skills, skill points and just in an understanding of the game. And so a lot of my early playtime was just trying to figure out what this game was, uh, despite the fact that there was you know, basically new tutorial. Often people were really unhelpful in explaining to you. And, you know, I would do stupid things like try to attack a Megathron with an assault frigate or, or other, it, or other <laughs> bits of idiocy. Uh, so one of the things I really like about Echoes is uh, everyone, at least so far, is largely on uh, on the same footing. Now, if you came from EVE Online, obviously you might have a better understanding of some of the game's mechanics, but you know, at least everybody's kind of in a fairly narrow uh, bracket of skill points where you know, you don't feel like you're completely outmatched by another player. Uh, so it's simpler, it still feels new, uh, it's not so established that new players can't find their way in it. Uh, so I think that's pro probably a lot of why I've uh, stuck with EVE Echoes, whereas you know, I haven't played EVE Online in probably about five years. That's actually great. I had to abandon EVE Online somewhere around 2016 when I abandoned PC gaming altogether. So that was a bummer, but I was very excited when EVE Echoes uh, hit the shelf because it was something that allowed me to continue something that I loved. <laughs> um, sure. So... We learned a bit about you and what you think of Eve Echoes. So we know you have a blog. What actually inspired you to start your blog? Uh, so thinking back on when I started playing Eve Online and was, and I really can't stress this enough, so unimaginably terrible at it. Uh, you know, I immediately was attracted to PvP. I wanted to get into that world, but I was just you know, th there was so little information that would tell you how to be a good pilot. Uh, 
Uh, and oftentimes, you know, the, the sort of people who were good pilots were in big NullSec alliances and they really didn't have time for a relatively new player. So there was just kind of this constant bashing your head against the wall, trying to figure out what it was that you were doing. Uh, and I wanted to create a resource that players who are new to the general EVE experience and to EVE Echoes in particular uh, could kind of dig into and, and maybe help that initial learning curve so that they can really get into what I really think is the, the meat of the game, the real fun of the game, uh, PvP, without necessarily having to go through the frustration that I did with EVE Online when I got to start. Yeah, the EVE curve in general is horrendous when it comes to learning. You've, you're hit with so much info. Uh, that, that's why it's said many people just abandon the game, because they feel like it's the Excel game. EVE has been dubbed over the years the Excel game. <laughs> Sure. So you could have went with a blog for Eve Echoes in general. You have some uh, some of the articles they have on your blog are in that specific area of the general side of like you talk about uh, um, some uh, some fittings, uh, some r basic rules. But what actually pushed you to build a blog theme specifically wraps around uh, the life of a pirate in New Eden. Uh, well, one, because I thought it was an angle that you really don't explore it as often. Uh, there are, uh, you know, blogs and resources for people who want to be indie pilots, uh, and there are countless Excel spread in the market and things like this, but very rarely do you hear anyone talking about how to be a pirate in the game. Uh, and for that matter, insofar as anyone d is talking about piracy and eve echoes, it's usually with, you know, strings of profanity and and talk about how terrible those people are. Uh, so I thought giving some voice to that style of play uh, was was helpful to the community. Also because, uh, frankly, it's the thing that's the most fun to me. Uh, again, I'm, I took PvP, and as a result, piracy just kind of comes naturally to that. Uh, I like playing. Uh, I like playing an environment where I'm regularly outnumbered, and I think there are a lot of players who 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 like that same feel, who like to be you know who like to play Eve as them against the entire the entire universe. And so, uh, and, you know, it seems that we found a little bit of a following with that. I can subscribe to that and actually approve that message because I'm, uh, I'm a pirate myself and have been in Eve Online ever since I, I started playing it back in 2005. Uh, it's just like the way of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to support the saying, um, like, a pirate life for me. Uh, where exactly do you get your funds? Like, do you have, uh, I don't know, how do you get the ships, the fits? Uh, is it standard PvE content? You got some alts running some PI, doing some mining, or you just simply go by, uh, I don't know, looting your victims? Uh, what keeps the cash flowing? How do you maintain yourself? Sure. Uh, well, as someone who actually does like spreadsheets in their actual day-to-day -day life, uh, so I, I do a pretty good job of keeping track of it. And from what I've been able to tell, uh, if I was just pirating, if I was just playing the game and, and doing my piracy, which is what I you know, most enjoy doing in the game, uh, actually piracy would be self-sustaining. So my, I make more money looting the corpse of my enemies than, uh, than I lose through the occasional loss of a ship, which is something I'm, I'm particularly proud of. That was not true in EVE Online. Uh, it has been true for me in Echoes, at least thus far. Uh, but because I'm writing and because I'm doing reviews, it's not just me replacing ships I lose. It's also, okay, well, I, I need to keep buying new ships and trying new fits if I'm going to have enough content for that. So in order to have enough content for, for that side of things, uh, the two things I branched out into was first uh, running missions. Uh, because that's pretty easy with the skill set that makes me a good pirate. Um, you know, the, the same kind of skill distribution lets me you know, fit into, uh, in my case right now, a prophecy uh, has been my most successful mission running ship because I can do uh, T8 story missions uh, actually pretty quickly with that. Uh, usually what I'll do, and I'll write an article on this at some point, but I'll go and buy uh, the you know, T6 and the two T8 uh, missions from Jita. Uh, and then fly the prophecy over and just knock all three of them out. And it usually takes about three hours to finish to finish all three. And at the end of it, I have about 150 million that I didn't have before. So when I re need a quick infusion of cash or 
dadgummit, I sold that shit before I should have, and I didn't get the screenshots for it. Dadgum, taller assault, I'm going to buy a third one. Uh, you know, that's that's usually the way I'll get a quick infusion of cash. Uh, that's what's going to pay for, and I'll talk about this in a second, the worm that I'm uh, hoping to review here in a little bit. Uh, I've just recently this week created a second account with three uh, planetary interaction alts as well. Uh, and between my main character and those three, that looks like it's bringing in about 30 million a day. Uh, so, That's nice. you know, amortizing over the week, you know, it's, it's, it's enough to, it's enough in a couple of weeks to buy a really well fit PVP ship. Uh, and so, and it doesn't take all that much time or effort uh, to, to invest in that. And so if I, if I was talking to a player who was wanting to, you know, find a revenue stream while still focusing primarily on PVP, that's what I would recommend. It's nice because I also fly Prophecy and before the Prophecy I uh, used to fly my Vexenavy issue. And same as you, mm -hmm. uh, to fuel my PvP content, uh, I just ran around uh, uh, going and soloing T8 and T10. Uh, I, I went a bit higher. Uh, the only difference in T10 is that I actually try to benefit from having the, um, the natural electromagnetic resistance. Uh, just mm -hmm. by doing the T10 from the MR. That's, I think, in my opinion, is the best um, paid mission, a story mission, 200 million, uh, not to count all the uh, Iskian bounty rewards and the actual items, which kind of are poop now because the market crashed, everybody's running storyline missions. Mm -hmm. uh, also, to help fuel PvP, uh, that's an interesting uh, point to check out because uh, the storyline missions. Uh, they should be a bit expensive because they're somewhere around the mark of uh, faction loot. Mm -hmm. But the price is so low <laughs> that it's actually almost free to, to fit a PvP ship just from storyline uh, items. Of course, the only exception makes the, like, the rare ones, uh, which is the micro warp drive and of course the warp disruptors. Uh, but we'll see if we get any updates on the loot tables once uh, once the latest patch uh, yeah. hits. But I would say the rigs are the other expensive part of that process. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but no, otherwise I agree with you. Uh, that may, really, I mean, half the cost of almost any of the PV ships I regularly fly right now are the warp disruptors because in the current meta, it's not just enough to have one. Uh, in, and having just like a single <laughs> Mark III warp disruptor, you might as well just not have it. So on most of the ships I fly, again, because I'm a pirate, I, I need a few more because I'm often you know, going after PvE ships in addition to PvP ships. Uh, but I think the, the Bellicose that I'm testing out right now has three interruptive uh, warp disruptors on it, which is... Well, not quite as much as the hull, but definitely, you know, just just from those three modules, you, you could buy a Caracal maybe for that. Uh, so it, <laughs> it, it, it feels a little ludicrous that <laughs> like half the value of my ship is the mid slots. Uh, but uh, with Aura Warp Stats, that's really just kind of what's required almost in order yeah. to, to be competitive or to, to be effective in piracy. So speaking of it, in your adventures of the seven space seas, did you manage to ransom anyone so far? Do you know, like, y'all pay up me some gold, or your ship goes boom to Davy Jones? Oh uh, man, I have, I have tried so hard. <laughs> I, I had, I had one episode because that was that was a lot of what I did in Eve Online when I got in piracy, and I usually yep. found that to be some of the best. For me. Uh, so you could go after someone's mission running ship that would be worth half a you know half a billion isk. And you know if you, you if you destroyed it, I don't know, maybe you'd get like fifty million out of it. But you could probably get them to pay almost the value of their ship just for you not to blow them up, and then subsequently pot them. So that was that was the way to make money. The, the problem or the difference between Eve Online and Eve Echoes, though, is that Eve Online it really was as simple as you right click my face in local and say give me money, and then put the right amount. And even that, like. I often had to explain it to people. It would be this weird thing. Where, like, I have your ship held with word disruptors and web of fires, and I'm giving you a tutorial on the user interface and trying to explain to you, no, okay, no, you have to, you have to right click me in local. You can't do it there. Okay, now you go. Okay, now you need to put in the, it's the right number of zeros. Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> like you're like, patiently being customer support for the person that you're threatening to murder. 
Uh, and in Eve, Eve echoes, the only way to accomplish that sort of thing is through the contract system. Yeah. And as I, I literally, I'm a teacher in real life. I teach kids how to program and things like this. I cannot reasonably explain to someone in, in, a, in the amount of time you have available in a combat how to fill out a contract if you've never done before. My guess is in six months or so, everyone will know the, the UI well enough and maybe they'll have got a handle on, uh, on you know how to deal with bots and how to exclude them from the platform that they'll be able to loosen the UI up for transferring money that maybe that will be possible. But right now it's, you're pretty much down to just you know, looting their you know, looting all their stuff and, and making money that way. Yeah, there's also the language barrier because uh, not everyone here on the on the Eve Echoes shard, uh, I think it's called the Aura. Uh, I think we saw yeah. it once um, when they actually introduced that test after two having two or three days of downtime. Uh, and uh, there's also, yeah, there's also the language barrier. I've been my um, exploits and my adventures. I ran in, a lot into uh, in, in Chinese players. Some of them are actually nice. I encountered uh, a lot of Chinese players. Some actually talk that nice. But of course, there's always salty people everywhere. It's impossible to have nice people everywhere and everyone to be nice. Um, I haven't encountered you. I actually, few of them, I actually tried hiring. to ransom someone. Uh, and I actually abandoned and disconnected my warp disruptor and just went away. <laughs> I don't know, but I <laughs> kind of felt it was off because I, I, I kept trying. I kept trying to tell him like, "You need to give me this amount into with via contract." But the thing is, with as an alpha player, you can't create contracts, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can't extort yes. isk yeah, from alpha the players. The other problem is that you you also have to just be lucky that you pick. Now, sometimes, by the way, you can tell because, of course, if they're in a if they're in a high enough tier ship, they almost have to be an Omega player to have all the skills that they would need to to fly and fit that out. But yeah, yeah realistically, uh, the the other the other problem with that then becomes, uh, and this is problem with e Eve Online as well. Like, if if I'm flying a Bellicose and I caught a hurricane, I don't really have time to sit and negotiate with you because <laughs> you have enough firepower that if I let up for a second, you are going to murder me. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you only get to ransom when you have a huge disparity in the the effectiveness of the, of the respective ships. And at, at least so far in Echoes, it's uh, you know, largely because battleships and things like that aren't, aren't yet in there. You just don't have quite the same opportunities. But you know, there, it may be possible down the line that uh, that we'll see Ransby come back. I certainly hope so, because uh, man, that usually the the really good payday yeah. are when you're able. That to system used to pay off a lot. lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's talk a bit about the game itself. Uh, we're going to receive an important update, which are interdiction sphere launches and warp scrambles, uh, basically allowing tacklers to be much more effective at keeping stuff into place. How do you foresee that these changes will actually change the battlefields? And more importantly, how much will it affect you and me and everyone running micro warp drives? Because warp scrambles are pretty much the death of it. Sure. Uh, so I, I think that, let me deal with them one at a time. So with introduction sphere launchers, I think that's going to have the effect of making nullsec quite a bit more dangerous. Now I'm assuming by the way that those are going to work the same way they work in EVE Online where you can do interdiction fields in null sec but you can't in low sec. So my guess is that that's going to start pushing some players uh, back into low sec as opposed to null sec which by the way would make me very happy because it is so much easier to hunt them in low sec than it is to hunt them in null sec. So you know anything that keeps players afraid of null sec is usually good for me. Uh, I think it also gives a lot of reason to uh, for people to fly more destroyers, which makes me happy. So I've really enjoyed those, uh, particularly in Eve Echoes. Uh, in, in Eve Online, destroyers just never seemed to really come into their own. They were always just a little too big to speed tank, but a little too weak to actually kill anything. But uh, they, they're kind of, a, at least right now, in a sweet spot with Eve Online. So something for, uh, with Eve Echoes. So anything that makes destroyers fun to fly is happy is a happy consequence for me. Uh, with scramblers, I actually think those are going to be a huge benefit to pirates 
because right now the uh, the meta really does favor ships getting away from combat as opposed to those uh, who are trying to hold on to players and keep them in combat. So one low slot aura warp stab is able to counteract two mid slot interruptive uh, warp warp disruptors, which essentially makes it it's very it's very easy to build a you know, especially a venture or a retriever, but even a combat ship that is virtually immune to any single player being able to pirate you. Uh, and in fact, you know, uh, almost you know, for every one target I'm able to actually grab in an anomaly or belt, I've probably let two get away just because, you know, they just had too many warp stabs for me able to hold them down. If scramblers work the way they're talking about, which is that they'll be twice as effective as warp disruptors of the same meta level, uh, that's going to tip the scales back to where it'll be more or less even. Uh, so if you have an interruptive uh, warp scrambler that has a strength of four, well, that's just enough to be countered by an activated aura uh, warp stabilizer. Uh, so you, you can go kind of one for one with people on that, which I, I think is going to be good for, uh, for a lot of pirates or a lot of pilots. Uh, I will say, it is going to make the you know, rain, you know, probably 10, 11, or 12 kilometers even more of a death zone for small ships than they already are. But that said, it's already a death zone. <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're flying a frigate, don't fly at eight. Don't don't orbit at eight kilometers. You're going to die because they're going to grab you with uh, with stasis webs. It's just going to get that much worse with adding a warp instructor. But just. I, I would say, I don't think those are going to get rid of micro warp drives for the same reason that they didn't get rid of micro warp drives in EVE Online. Uh, the reason that micro warp drives are great is not necessarily that they allow you to speed tank so much as they just allow you to be fast and get into and out of combat. And as long as you're smart enough to fly outside of warp disruptor range, uh, you'll still be effective. I will say though, one, one big effect or warp, warp scramblers, if they work the way I think they do, I think they're going to make uh, I think they're going to make stealth bombers incredibly effective in PvP, uh, particularly for ganking style PvP, because they'll be able to get into that really close range in order to actually activate them uh, pretty much before combat even begins. Uh, and even with two mid slots, if you have two interrupt interruptive warp scramblers, that should be enough to hold on to just about anything in the game. So I think that will make them uh, really effective initial tacklers. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward yeah. to uh, to this. Okay, and we're down to uh, some fast questions. Uh, no explanation needed. Just to find out some stuff, you hold dear. Missiles or Minmatar cannons? Missiles. Uh, shield or armor? Shield. Stealth bomber or assault frigate? Stealth bomber. Jita or no Jita? Gita. And the last one, Pod Express or Leave Them Alone in Space? Leave Them Alone in Space. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible people we are. Okay, so uh, nearing our final two questions here. What are you working on right now? And of course, if it's no secret, can you share it with us? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, so right now I'm working on build guides for the Bellicose. So that's the Minmatar uh, uh, Cove Ops. Uh, cruiser. So uh, you know, it has that Kovox cloaking device that a stealth bomber has, but it doesn't have quite the same mechanics. It still has a 30 second uh, you know, lock delay after you deactivate it. But I've been having a lot of fun flying that around in uh, flying that around in Nullsec. Uh, and that's also uh, one of the other things that we didn't talk about with the upcoming update is uh, the addition of target painters. And I think that could make that ship a really effective platform. It's already pretty good. It's already like a caracal navy, but slightly, but slightly more tanky and slightly more damage. But once you start adding uh, once you start adding target painters on there, you could really have the potential for a really good captain of a stealth bomber fleet, uh, you know, <laughs> roaming around. Uh, the other thing I, I'm kind of excited about, uh, mainly because I didn't get to do this in EVE Online at all, is I'm actually getting a faction frigate that I'll be putting through its paces this week. So I uh, purchased a worm that hopefully will be delivered on Wednesday from one of my Alliance mates. So I'm curious to see what how that thing's going to fly and to write a build guide for that. Definitely looking towards the warm as well because I'm actually a drone pilot. <laughs> I have only drone skills. 
Yeah, so I, I mainly drone and missiles, uh, though I have a few Minmatar cannons and other things. I have, I, I've, I've completely gotten rid of rail guns, unfortunately. Uh, I would like them to be good, and they are with, in certain applications. And I've written about you know flying a thorax and other things on my on my blog, but you know, at least in the current incarnation of the game, turrets are a little disadvantaged. But man, are, did they did they just really do you know do dirty by? <laughs> <laughs> rail guns those those are really painful to fly at the moment yeah uh and down to our last question what uh, your readers should expect from you in the upcoming future and any big plans for 2021 sure well the big things that we have coming up uh we're i'm working with a couple of other authors to do some guest articles and even a guest series from some nullsec pilots who are noted pvp players so I, I think that might be a good addition to the blog and hopefully can give some uh you know just other voices that uh, hopefully will resonate with people in the eu echoes community uh have in mind a couple of contests that i'd like to do uh, build contests and things like that that hopefully will uh, be fun for other people to be make the blog a little bit more interactive uh but those are the big the big plans and of course uh, i'm really hoping that with getting a few more patreon subscribers please check out patreon uh, that will be able to you know, really kind of beef up my schedule and actually devote some serious time to the blog. Uh, you know, hopefully getting to three, four times a week would be fantastic. That's an awesome uh, objective or goal you had uh, set up there. Of course, uh, let's just hope, uh, well, I for one really hope the pandemic would just end, like really end. <laughs> but I Man, thought, I'm I right there with it's you. Gonna end. Yeah, I don't think it's going to end, and it's probably going to keep us locked up in our homes for the next 10 years. Uh, this is just me being <laughs> horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho hopefully that won't be the case. I will say uh, it probably would be good for Eve Echo's con uh, continuity and uh, continued success <laughs> if it lasted a little bit longer. It seems. See, I'm guessing we have a few more players for this game right now than would happen if, if there was no pandemic and people could go out and pee in sunshine and all of that wonderfulness. Uh, so, anything you'd like to uh, to say to the viewers? Uh, thank you guys for your support. Uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed about being a content creator in this game is, uh, man, that there's just so much interactivity. There's uh, so much just outpouring of affection and support from fans. Uh, I, this is actually the first game I've ever been a content creator for, and so it's just been it's really been a delightful experience. And I'm uh, looking forward to getting to uh, to meet new fans and and have more adventures with them in the future. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you for your time, uh, Skyray. I'm glad we managed to find the time and get some uh, awesome knowledge about you as a pirate, um, a pilot. And uh, talk about your creative side in regards to your blog. Folks, be sure to check out the blog, a link in the description. Throw in a like and a subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And don't forget, we have a YouTube channel membership right here. And if you like to support, um, Sky Ray, he's got a patron. If you'd like to support me, the YouTube channel membership, you can donate something as small as $2 monthly. Be sure to check the Pirate's Guide. Be sure to hang around for the upcoming days and weeks in regards to when the Interdictors will come down. Uh, and we're going to do some interesting content there. Probably Sky Ray is going to be interested in some interdiction maneuver as well. Thanks again, Skyray. Thank you guys for watching. Big shout out to my channel supporters. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Nice to meet you, Jika. Well, other than that, I don't know if you find a weird mechanic, if you have uh, a weird, I don't know, exploit or something that a scam. <laughs> like I, I did a couple of scam videos just to, uh, to, mm -hmm. to prove a point that people should be aware of. Of course, I also inadvertently created um, the opposite, just like revealing a magic trick, you know, for some people the magic is gone, but for some people learning about <laughs> it, the, actually re the magic actually really starts, and they start doing it themselves. <laughs> sure. I, I get to watch, of course, you and ben Benzi and the others, and I I'm so glad that I'm not making videos, <laughs> because I have thought to myself <laughs> never times, like, what would I even make? You guys have covered everything. <laughs> Uh, but exactly. Luckily, my audience, most of my audience are the man. Why are they making videos? I just want to read something, crowd. And I'm so glad those people exist. And I'm also so glad that nobody else is making content for them. <laughs> <laughs>